Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Perspective. And tonight we speak matters, technology and the fight against COVID-19. And in studio we have Kenneth Otieno. He is a medical engineer and director at Gradient Health Systems. Thank you so much and welcome to our studios. I'm sure it's your first time after the revamp. Uh, thank you. It is. <laughs> okay. Now, with the um, introduction of um, restrictions by the governments all over the world, you know, calls on let's embrace technology, it, we, we've been hearing all this from all sectors of, you know, all sectors of the world. So, I, is it okay if I say that the world of technology is enjoying and the people who started using technology a long time ago, they are in a better place as far as being negatively impacted by COVID-19 pandemic is concerned? Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, technology has played a very big role, not only in fight against uh, COVID-19, but even uh, against, uh, I mean, we've used a lot of technology to do diagnosis, mm -hmm. to do uh, therapy, and even research. For instance, now there are a lot of research that is going on with, uh, with um, COVID-19. And what is helping us to move faster than it was before mm -hmm. is the technology. Mm -hmm. Actually, people are wondering how comes uh, the, the, the tests are becoming faster is because of the technology, the work that is put on there by the medical engineers, or not only to come up with equipments that are, be able, are able to test, but also even the ones that are doing research, mm -hmm. uh, they're using research. And even being used in the, in the business world, the fact that people have uh, to stay at home and work from home, sure, right? Sure, sure. Now, was this how things were before the pandemic? You know, you've been using technology to respond to different medical issues, but now with the pandemic, a lot has to be done as far as responding to it is concerned, and technology is at the center of it all. Is this how technology has been for years, or we are seeing some improvement with the pandemic uh, the the pandemic has brought a lot of uh, a lot of good things yeah. uh, there are also bad things that are that has come with it mm. but there are also good things that uh, has come with this pandemic the technology has increased mm. and we are doing certain things which we used not to do before before covid we have actually uh, opened our minds to be working at from home mm. we have opened our minds to do some testing not only in the hospital but even outside the hospital so technology actually uh, has really changed our lives mm -hmm. and is going to even be more. It is being tested now how it can be able to change life and makes it much easier. Yeah. So let's come to the role technology is playing in the fight against COVID-19. I know when we, we talk about COVID-19 and technology, even the testing process itself, it's courtesy of the technology. But maybe you can help us understand, especially at Gradian, what is the new, you know, research that is ongoing or development new equipment that we have as far as taking care or responding to the pandemic is concerned thank you so much uh, at gradient we are innovative company mm. uh, innovative technology company that tries to not only develop equipments that work in areas that have uh, a stronger infrastructure but even in areas where we have a very weak infrastructures and so when you look at all some of the equipments that are developed by gradient uh, they can be able to work in very deep rural areas because in Gradient we believe all lives are important. And one thing that we have also realized is that uh, apart from having the equipment that we use in diagnosis and therapy, we also have uh, realized that we must be able to train our people. And COVID has made us develop things that we never thought of before. Now we have come up with uh, simulation labs which probably long time used not to exist. And the simulation labs help us to ensure that uh, the clinicians are trained in uh, a setup that is more or less uh, a ward or a, a ICU or a theater. And this is a technology that Gradient has brought to several countries in Africa so that instead of working on a live patient, you have uh, mannequins, you have uh, this technology that enables you to treat the patient because they can also react like any other human being. Yeah. And so this has been our, a lot of, we've, we've had a lot of interest in this because we believe that equipment without training is as good as not being there. And so we have really been involved in trying to set up uh, simulation labs 
and one of them is the one that we launched uh, two weeks ago at mm -hmm. KMTC mm -hmm. that will enable the students to learn much and understand uh, the real uh, environment in the hospital in a, in a lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is all technology. So by the time you go to the, to, the, to the ward, you have all this confidence because you have killed the mannequin and resurrected it and killed it again. <laughs> and like human being, which if mm. you kill, uh, then it's gone. Yeah, uh, and um, we've been looking at researchers and questions. Why are scientists not coming up with a cure for COVID-19? But biomedical engineers are also scientists. Maybe you can tell us how, and, and, and you come in, you know, you come in with digital technologies. Maybe now you can tell us how technology has been at the center in the fight against COVID-19. Of course, we talked about PCR tests. Yes. Yes, how else? Uh, I know uh, we medical engineers mm. uh, not only uh, develop therapeutic or equipment for treatment but they also develop equipment for research which and as they actually as I had mentioned has enabled us to move very fast in testing uh, I remember when COVID came it will take you a week to get your results but now it takes you a day to get it or even some few hours to get it this is all technology that comes with uh, uh, these engineers and uh, even when it comes to treatment, the treatment like COVID-19 is changing every day. Uh, we started, uh, I don't want to go to, to, to details, but we started with some equipment and we realized those ones do not work. The, the Maybe you can mention what we uh, are using even with testing because you said initially it would take a week before yes. uh, you could get your results and now it's actually can confirm a few hours. Maybe what has changed in terms of technological advancement? Uh, what has changed is um, the engineers have come up and looked at how effective can it be if we are able to uh, make this thing faster? Because sometimes you'll die before you get your results. And so equipments have come up which can be able to do this faster. Equipments have come up which can be able to treat you faster and even much be better and even monitor you more, much better than it was before. And all these are a lot of research and uh, it, it happens during this crisis that you're doing research because something has happened and you really want to capture and ensure that people uh, are able to get a better diagnosis, better treatment, and uh, even better monitoring during the, the time of treatment. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and let's get back to the role that technology is playing in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, technology, uh, one, as I had said, is uh, to ensure that uh, the testing mm. is okay. Actually, let me start from the research, yeah. that we have equipment that can be able to uh, not only do uh, uh, an efficient res uh, research, but even ensure that they are accurate. And then when it comes to uh, now testing, we are ensuring that the testing, uh, the technology that comes up every day, ensuring that uh, testing is done faster. and. Uh, there you are in the ward, mm -hmm. then we need to uh, treat you, and then we have these equipments that are now able to treat you even much pa faster, and not only you, are able also to protect the, uh, the, the users who are treating you, unlike probably before. So, um, for instance, I'll just say, if, if you are in some wards those days, uh, you will not ha be able to have a clean air. So the, uh, the user, who is supposed to treat you was vulnerable because any time it can also get infected. But again, we are now changing. Uh, the air is being sucked out and a clean one sucked in, and so makes even the user have the confidence of ensuring that uh, it treats you well. Mm -hmm. And all this is technology. And when it comes to treatment, uh, we have seen COVID-19 is really changing very fast. And so as it changes, technology also changes mm -hmm. so that you are able to uh, be able to uh, eliminate or treat the patients mm -hmm. as fast as possible. But the change uh, maybe appears to be faster in some countries than others. I can give you an example. Uh, with the test results, we are still not uh, faster than some countries that I know. Like, let's say, for example, here it takes a day, but there are places where you could literally wait for your results. And if other, other examples, like, for example, here in Kenya, we are not able to even store some vaccines, such as Pfizer, because we don't have the equipment. Maybe 
we can talk, uh, look at what are some of the challenges to ensuring that we are at par with even developed countries, if I may say so. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know we'll be there one time. Yeah. We are moving towards there. But I, be, I know the biggest challenge that we have is um, the human resource. Because uh, having an equipment is one thing. Having people who are competent enough to use it is another thing. And uh, also, uh, the other thing is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Do we have the necessary infrastructure, uh, infrastructure to be able to accommodate these equipments? So all these are challenges which I think we may not be able to have in one day, I mean, sort out in one day. Mm -hmm. But I believe as we learn from others and also as we try to have our own homegrown solutions, we'll be able to overcome some mm -hmm. of these challenges. And why I'm asking this question is because many Kenyans would want to know why we are not the ones, let's say, we, we were not even the ones coming up with a vaccine, not even uh, um, Kenya. What is the problem? If we have the expertise, then why can't we have, is it a software that our engineers are yet to come up with that would really aid into having or uh, developing a vaccine, you know? Yeah, it's, 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 it might be a long story, but mm. I believe uh, mm -hmm. it has to do with infrastructure, yeah. uh, equipment, mm. and the training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and more so, mm. how much do we put in research? How much do we put in technology? And uh, those are the challenges. And how much do we put in human resource? Mm -hmm. Because you can have the equipment, but if there are no re human resource uh, enough, competent enough to mm. handle them, it also becomes a, as, as good as useless. So I think these are the challenges that we have. Mm. The infrastructure, uh, the, 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 the human resource, the, expert, the experts, you know, the expertise that we can be able to handle mm. this. But I know with time, probably, mm -hmm. we'll be there. Right. And as we speak, is there any research, new research that is ongoing, especially you know, the world is still racing towards getting a cure for COVID-19 disease. Maybe do we have any new research going on or maybe biomedical engineers in Kenya, are you coming up, are, looking, are we looking at coming up with either an equipment or software that would really be used in um, getting a cure for the disease? Uh, I know, um, I'm not a researcher, but I know the research, yeah. there, are, there are a lot of researches that are going on. Yeah. Uh, but one thing that uh, I know has been of interest and we as biomedical engineers in Kenya has been trying to do is to come up with equipment, equipments that can be able to uh, reduce our cost of buying equipment from outside. Mm. But I know the challenges that we have is that um, it requires money, mm -hmm. it requires experts to be able to assist those who have the idea. And uh, I think that is the, the biggest challenge we, we have. But I think uh, the medical engineers, I know, you remember when COVID came, mm. there were so many uh, uh, ventilators which came up and were developed, and I think they're still going on. One time, you'll see one in the market. And finally, how have the technological companies benefited from this? Because it's a necessary evil to yeah. some people, like for example, those uh, you know, looking at digital technology, people are working from home, therefore there are so many opportunities. Maybe you can help us understand what opportunities that um, Kenyans can tap in. <laughs> uh, I know th th there are a lot of opportunities which yeah. has come up with, yeah. um, in as much as have, there have been challenges, yeah. but there are a lot of opportunities which has, have come up with, uh, with the challenges of COVID-19. Uh, but I, I would want to talk as a person who is mm. in the medical field, mm. uh, and as a biomedical engineer, it has opened our minds to be able to think broader. You know, when COVID-19 came, uh, equipment were first given, uh, taken by people who have the money. And countries which were not having money could not be able to, uh, to have these equipments. So it opened our minds that really we should be able to have own grown uh, solutions to our problems and this really has created a lot of research and a lot of uh, innovations that are going on which I think is good for us mm -hmm. without that we were probably relaxed because there were no challenges you know innovations come with challenges mm -hmm. and uh, as as gradient who works in very challenging environments we've come up with equipments which are be able to work in areas uh, especially um, uh, our ventilators are able to work in rural areas where you really don't have a stronger infrastructure as compared if it was here in town. Mm. And these are technologies which have come up because of the, uh, or innovations that have come up because of the need that, has, uh, mm. that we've been able to, 
uh, the challenges we have had. Well, we will have Indeed, technology well. playing a greater role, especially in getting medical health solutions. Thank you so much, uh, Kenneth Otieno, for making time for us. We do appreciate, but we have to wrap it Pleasure. up there. And we wish you all the best as you continue with your research and innovations and trying to develop new equipment and softwares in the fight against COVID-19. Thank you so much. That's where we wrap it up. Thank you for watching. We take a short break, but we still have...